Uh, I think Coach Eric Bieniemy is big on that. He always says the most important play is the next play, and he preaches that to the offense. Bieniemy said, "What the?" F and Mahomes said, "Call the fucking play, or I will." Do you remember the AFC Championship? I do. And not to take anything away from the Cincinnati Bengals, but come on, let's be honest. During the final drive of the Kansas City Chiefs season, they didn't really look like the Kansas City Chiefs, man. I mean, when you compare them in the AFC Championship to how they were against the Buffalo Bills, I remember when we were watching the AFC Championship, the moment the Chiefs won the coin toss, we were like, God damn it, they're gonna win again. So things went a little quiet, and ultimately, an article that that was sent to me by multiple of my followers on Twitter got to me and I was able to read it by the time I wanted to come back and make a video on it the article disappeared and was deleted it's an insane article that gives you a deep dive into the rift in the Kansas City Chiefs locker room that is primarily based around Patrick Mahomes and Eric Bieniemy. so before we get to the content this video will probably get demonetized because there's controversial issues that we're going to be discussing in this video and when a video gets demonetized YouTube does doesn't push it to a larger audience because YouTube can't make money off of it. And you could counteract that by leaving a like on the video. So my content, despite it not making any revenue for YouTube, gets pushed out to a larger audience. I'm also gonna announce a winner for $500 on my Instagram story today. Thank you guys so much because together we were able to hit 500,000 subscribers. So now that we got all that out of the way, break. Mike check one, two, one, two. What's going on, everybody? I wanna give some disclaimers before we get to this. The source for this article is from a website called the Chiefs Kingdom Editorial Board. Now, I'm gonna be honest, I've never heard of these guys in my life, and they're making some pretty interesting claims in this article. So I'm going to give you a heads up. There is a chance that what we are hearing is either like we're the first ones to get it, and it slipped through the cracks, and Rap Sheet and Schefter didn't get their hands on it, or it could be total BS. But needless to say, I thought it was really interesting and a lot of you guys wanted me to make a video on this So I figured that we should make a video on it So the article begins by saying let's set the table This is not a story from the Kansas City Star or better publications Patrick Mahomes did not throw the game The length of this article is intended to provide context and insight and the NFL did not order the Chiefs to throw the game So right away, they're very transparent saying hey, we're not the most well-known individuals So I can understand if you're a little sketched out by this report then it comes continues to say that the game of football is played with the highest level of passion possible, an energy that most simply don't understand. But realize this, what occurred on the Chiefs sideline and in the locker room during the AFC Championship wasn't a brief spat or a heat of the moment flare up. It was instead the culmination of several issues that all came to a head at the worst time possible. We ask that you put away your preconceived notions about national reporters caring about Kansas City, because this story will not be reported on because of the optics involved. So right away, they're being very transparent that this story is so crazy that national sources will not be able to report on it. Which, dude, with all due respect, you're telling me that the NFL would miss out on an opportunity to report on a very crazy story that happened behind the scenes? I'm a little sketched out. It then gives background as to who they are, and I guess this is why we should trust them. Saying that this account is run by a few people, the owner is someone who covered the team in the background since 1997, and they were originally known as the Save Our Chiefs movement. They say they are the single greatest fan revolt in sports fandom history that rekindled the owner's connections to those in NFL circles. Chiefs employees fed us info, gave us insights to the hiring of Andy Reid and such, and much more. Since we have taken a step back, only reporting sporadically, we don't have a podcast, a website needing clicks, or a need to generate profit. We simply share what we know for the enjoyment of Chiefs Kingdom. We get asked about our sources, and let me tell you how they come about. The NFL is a multi-billion dollar industry. They control 100% of the narrative, nothing is left to chance, except the police blotter. Even then, they can control the longevity of something in the media. But when it comes to the team level, people will talk, and in the case of the Kansas City Chiefs' most recent playoff loss, they are. Based upon information provided directly to us, there is a narrative being pushed out not only by the Chiefs, but at least two 
high profile players, and there's nothing wrong with that, but this is how the off the field game is played in the NFL. And a lot of the stuff that they say is stuff that I already knew, especially this next paragraph here, saying that Ted Cruz, the executive vice president of communications for the Chiefs, is the main handler of information, both public and private, and does a masterful job of controlling information released to local reporters and national insiders. So when things like Andy Reid is meeting with Eric Bieniemy come out, it's because of the team or agents or sometimes both wanted the news out. Sub-tier employees of the Chiefs also have access to this information. There are several people at One Arrowhead Drive who want a certain narrative pushed out so a different one can be ignored. The Chiefs are wary of the optics of separating from Eric Bieniemy. Technically, they already have, as Bieniemy has no contract with the club and is a free agent. Given the Brian Flores lawsuit and perceptions of racist behavior towards Bieniemy, the Chiefs simply don't want to be in the crosshairs of the same controversy right now. So right away, they give you a little bit of a background of what's going on. And if you know what's going on with Eric Bieniemy, pretty much this is the offensive coordinator of the Kansas City Chiefs. And you might be thinking, okay, who cares? Well, the offensive coordinator of the Kansas City Chiefs is a position that's very similar to being the offensive coordinator for the LA Rams. Typically, it's the stepladder to a head coaching job. I mean, look at the latest line of Sean McVay's to come out of the Sean McVay factory. Brandon Staley a year ago, Kevin O'Connell this year. Hell, Zach Taylor was his quarterback coach and got hired by the Cincinnati Bengals a couple years before. And the same could be said about Andy Reid's offensive coordinators, especially when you have a high profile offense such as the Kansas City Chiefs. I mean, even before the Mahomes era, Doug Peterson got a job with the Philadelphia Eagles. Matt Nagy got a job with the Chicago Bears. And most recently, the next man that was presumed to be up in this line of head coaches was supposed to be Eric Bieniemy. But last year, he didn't really get a head coaching job to many people's shock. And well, it seems like this year things are about to get more complicated because it seems like the Chiefs don't even want him back because of what happened between him and Patrick Mahomes. So the article continues by saying that there is no racism involved with Bieniemy not getting a head coaching job. But when you interview for a role 15 times and come away empty handed, it's time to look at the man in the mirror. The enemy has rushed his interviews, been incomplete in thought and structure, and lacked a true plan that a billionaire owner can get behind. Now, again, bear in mind that we don't know how credible these sources are, but what we could do is we could cross-reference what they're saying with basic events. He famously had an eight-hour interview with the New Orleans Saints. He had an interview with the Denver Broncos and the Houston Texans. And ultimately, to be honest, the reason I thought he didn't get any of those jobs is I didn't didn't think he's a suitable fit for any of those jobs. I mean, none of those teams currently have a quarterback. The Broncos are targeting Aaron Rodgers, so they wanted to hire his best friend, Nathaniel Hackett. The Texans don't really have a direction and are in the midst of a rebuild, and it's a pretty bad quarterback draft here. And then the New Orleans Saints are pretty much a situation that I don't imagine any head coach wanting to inherit the New Orleans Saints based off of their cap situation, their lack of a quarterback, and that's nothing against the New Orleans Saints. The article continues by saying, saying that the back channel communication on Biennemi is simply not good and it doesn't have anything to do with race. Case in point, the NFL begged and pleaded with the Saints ownership group to strongly consider Biennemi. In the end, the team felt Dennis Allen's plan and continuity was more important than Biennemi's ideas in the NFL's pleadings. So what's gonna happen now? Well, Eric Biennemi is going to be a free agent. He'll meet with the Chiefs and talk through options. They have held internal talks with another round coming soon. However, considering what has happened and what you're about to read, it all boils down to the fact that, and in bold, the Chiefs and Eric Bieniemy are not meant for each other. In order to understand the reasoning behind this, you have to travel back a year ago to when the Kansas City Chiefs just lost to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers due to a Dollar General style duct tape offensive line. Patrick Mahomes ran for 500 plus lateral yards escaping pass rushers, and the Chiefs were exposed. Walking out of the stadium that night, Bieniemy's contract with the Chiefs had expired, which was a well-publicized story leading up to the Super Bowl. Biennemi was passed over for head coaching opportunities. Whispers started to circulate about his deficiencies as a head coach, but players, for the most part, remained silent. Between the Super Bowl and the draft, Biennemi quietly signed a one-year deal for just over $1 million, and the Chiefs didn't release details. Kansas City News didn't really report on it. But according to the source of this article, which bear in mind, we are reading this article wondering whether or not we could trust these people. When training camp arrived, Biennemi was different. He didn't have the same energy he was previously known for. He was short and temperamental with a lot of people behind closed doors. Flashback to August 2020 when Biennemi made this statement about Patrick Mahomes. At 
Pat, and I'll say this, kudos to Pat. He's done a heck of a job. He's had a great career so far. But you guys have been around him and you know him. He's a competitive prick, okay? He's a great kid, but he's a competitive prick. He wants to improve at everything he possibly can improve upon. He wants to be the best at whatever he can do. And along the way, he wants to make sure that he's leading the guys. He wants to be held accountable by his peers. But also, too, he just wants to work. And that's what you love about uh, being around him every single day. So I'm going to give you what the article says and then give you my thoughts about this quote. Because according to the article, there was nothing playful about this quote. According to our source, Biennemi disliked the dynamics that Mahomes brought to the offense because he felt it hurt his chances to become a head coach. His statement may have come across as a joke, but as with any okay. joke told, there's always some truth hidden in the delivery. Um... I don't know. I just watched that interview a couple of times and you guys watched that interview a couple of times. And personally, it seems like he is using this as a term of endearment. I mean, you could typically tell when someone doesn't like another individual and Eric Bieniemy seems to be respecting Patrick Mahomes. I mean, like he did say he's a great kid, but he's a competitive prick. So maybe he's kind of venting over here. I'm unsure, but it seems like this is all being used as a term of endearment to me we have the video for you the article didn't provide the video so we did some hunting for you guys you guys could draw your own conclusions based off of that so far that didn't really do much to convince me that these two don't get along now moving on the 2020 season featured some minor disagreements between Mahomes and Biennemi that are at times just part of playing in the NFL it was nothing out of the ordinary however the situation began to head down a slippery slope as the Super Bowl preparations went south Biennemi was interviewing for a head coaching job while the team was trying to navigate the game plan then offset their offensive line problems. Mahomes and Reed, according to our source, had a good plan in place, but Biennemi didn't like it. He made several changes and he had the power to do so in his contract because he called the plays in 2020 as he did in 2021. That is very suspect to me. You're telling me the offensive coordinator of the Kansas City Chiefs gets to overrule Andy Reid on these types of things? Well, there's an editor's note to this saying many are misinterpreting the previous paragraph, Biennemi does not have final say over Reed. Reed at any time can intervene, but in this case, Biennemi disagreed, lobbied for a different set of plays to be called, and convinced Reed and Mahomes that it made sense. The person with the final say can and often does defer to a subordinate, especially when he's trying to help that person get a head coaching job. Well, in terms of whether something's believable or not as believable, you could also go back to 2018 when the New England Patriots absolutely crushed the Los Angeles Rams in the Super Bowl. Ryan Floyd has had a huge hand to play in it. These signature wins are what inevitably gets these guys head coaching jobs, at least in my opinion. I could see it being a situation where Pat and Andy Reid had a great plan in place and then last second the enemy said, no, this is a horrible plan because X, Y, and Z. We should not throw as many screen passes. We should try to throw the deep balls because we have a horrible offensive line going up against a really good pass rush. Even then, I'm a little skeptical about this as well. One month after the Super Bowl loss, the decision was made to bring back the enemy on a quiet one year deal while hoping he would receive the head coaching opportunity that he had worked for. Everyone was on board with the game plan. Now focus on the optics. It's easier to lose a coach publicly to a promotion than having to potentially fire a high profile coach. Optics matter a lot to these owners, so that's something I could believe. It would look really weird if the team that made it to the Super Bowl fired their offensive coordinator, especially given these times. You're in the midst of seeing a successful black head coach get fired in Brian Flores, and now he's He's suing the team that originally fired him, which I will give him credit for. It didn't make a lot of sense given the success he provided, but now he's suing teams that didn't hire him. I'm not here to say what he's doing is right or wrong, but I am saying that it does look a little funny if you're experiencing success and then you decide to hire your successful black offensive coordinator. It would be way easier for Eric Bieniemy to leave his team because he got a head coaching job than to stay pat and get fired after making it to the Super Bowl. And then the Kansas City Chiefs started poorly in 2021. Patrick Mahomes struggled, eyebrows were raised, the national media dug in, smelling blood, and we all blamed Jackson Mahomes for this. No, I'm not kidding. From me to Pat McAfee, like, we all blame Jackson for this. You shouldn't have dumped that water on the Baltimore Ravens fan, Jackson. Jokes aside, the reality of the situation was that the schemes were misaligned. Several defensive backs were not getting along with defensive backs coach Sam Madison, and the Chiefs had lingering injuries. And then the biggest snowball of all started 
rolling in again. The hidden feud between B enemy and Mahomes. And ladies and gentlemen, here we go. In week three, during a midweek meeting between B enemy, QB coach Mike Kafka, and Patrick Mahomes, B enemy laid into his star quarterback for no reason. Both Kafka and Mahomes pushed back on B enemy. After this heated argument, which was not normal, Reed stepped in. Following the loss to the Bills, Kafka was quietly given a greater role in planning the Chiefs' passing game. Kafka is known for being creative offensively at Arrowhead. His innovations are often called the Mike Files, and he came up with the Rose Bowl right, the play the Chiefs ran for a key first down in Super Bowl 54. It's also interesting because there's some pretty wild details in this. There's another editor's note saying an error was made here. While Mike Kafka does have plays called the Mike Files, there are also plays called the Joe Files that come from wide receiver coach Joe Blameyer. We incorrectly attributed the Rose Bowl right to Kafka when in fact it was Blameyer's doing, and we apologize for this accidental misidentification. You see, things like this is what makes the general public think, okay, maybe these dudes are legit. So at this point, the enemy's role was adjusted, but Reed continued to let him call plays. Once the Chiefs opening script was exhausted, this was in Eric Bieniemy's contract. The changes led to the Chiefs having a run of success. Then before the Chiefs Raiders game in Las Vegas, Reed told production officials to avoid sideline shots of Bieniemy. Something again had happened in that week of prep leading up to the game. Nobody will go on record as to what other than to say something happened. But if you go back and rewatch the games this year, Bieniemy's camera time went down compared to years past. Okay, so time out. I'm expected to believe that Andy Reid said to the Kansas City Chiefs to bring back Eric Bieniemy for one more year just so the Kansas City Chiefs don't get flack for firing a successful black offensive coordinator and then at the same time he decides to do something that could potentially not get him hired and that's reducing the amount of times he's shown on camera during Kansas City Chiefs games. That is a complete contradiction of what Andy Reid is trying to do. If he's trying to get Eric Bieniemy hired away from the Kansas City Chiefs, then you're doing whatever it takes to hype this man up so some other team could hire him away from your team. Not the opposite which is why I'm a little bit more skeptical about this report. Since then, numerous fans who have attended games at Arrowhead and on the road have asked, what's with Enemy and Mahomes? They are beefing on the sidelines. The answer, Mahomes and Enemy do not get along. For anyone questioning Mahomes at this point, consider the following insight from a family member of a high profile Chiefs player. Most of the guys tune Eric Enemy out because he does the one thing good coaches don't do, and that's ignore feedback from the players. We have heard heard from multiple chief staff, including some who stand on the sidelines, that Reed, Mahomes, Biennemi have disagreed over game plans and strategy all year, as well as far back to late 2020. The same sources have indicated to us that the reason Biennemi doesn't have a head coaching job is because of his temperament and unwillingness to accept feedback from his players. This came up from the Texans and the New Orleans Saints. Broncos GM George Patton asked Biennemi point blank in his interview about a situation he saw while in Kansas City earlier this season, and the the answer from Bianami eliminated him from job contention. There's an editor's note saying, we want to be clear here, there were multiple factors that led to Bianami not receiving final consideration for the Denver job. It was not just one answer and we could have structured this sentence better. I honestly think in my heart of hearts, the Broncos are so in on Aaron Rodgers that I don't think that Bianami would have gotten the job to begin with. Now it ties this into what went down in the AFC championship. And that's on the last play before halftime, three feet in nearly two years of frustration wiped out a chance to secure Kansas City's third straight Super Bowl berth. Poor communication, stubbornness, and a lack of game control all came together at the worst possible time. Players have to execute the plays, but coaches also have a job to do. The enemy failed in this situation, and everyone in the NFL knows this. A timeline of events with nine seconds to go in the second, timeout number one by Cincinnati with nine seconds left to go. The enemy tells Mahomes that he has a timeout left and that they have five play calls lined up, two of which were runs that were never sent in. The first play failed. Biennemi then told Mahomes that he had one timeout left and to run play X or take a field goal. The narrative that Biennemi only wanted a field goal is 100% false. Biennemi called the play that resulted in a doomed pass to Hill, not Reed. Mahomes then tried to call timeout and the clock expired. Biennemi called the entire game while Reed can chime in at any point and toss out a call. Biennemi had full play calling authority via his contract. Biennemi and Mahomes get into it at halftime, in the tunnel and in the locker room. There was an in-the-face yelling 
before Reed and the other coaches stepped in. It happened again after the game. Any remaining confidence or trust in the relationship was broken at that point. Anyone who has played QB at a higher level will say that the headset can't be chaotic. Usually only one coach has access, but this goes unchecked by the NFL. Unfortunately, those in-game moments where Mahomes is squeezing his helmet and receiving calls late is due to multiple voices on the hot mic. This happened multiple times in 2021, and during the AFC Championship, it was chaotic, particularly before the final snap prior to halftime. Nobody can say exactly when this happened, but at one point during the AFC Championship, the following exchange took place after Biennemi called a play. Reed said, no run this. Biennemi said, what the fuck? Kafka said, we're blowing the game, and Mahomes said, call the fuck play or I will. Editors note, we fully understand that Mahomes does not have a two-way mic. His statement was heard from the field and sidelines and was sequential to this exchange as told to us. Mahomes has said this multiple times over the years. Every QB to play the game has said something like this. Mahomes was caught on camera saying this in the Denver game and those issues boiled all season long. For a high profile offensive lineman snapped and spoke at halftime. This player is usually quiet, so his words have resonated with several high ranking members of the Chiefs brass the past three weeks. The enemy called the entire second half, calling multiple times for Clyde edwards alaire to get the ball instead of Jarek McKinnon. The enemy called for Demarcus Robinson to get the ball in overtime over McCole Hardman. Both passes fell incomplete. The enemy ignored feedback from Tyreek Hill, Travis Kelsey, McCole Hardman, and Jarek McKinnon. The enemy had his my way or the highway moment calling plays in the second half. At the end of regulation with the Chiefs needing a touchdown to win, the enemy called at least two plays that the team hadn't practiced in three months. It led to confusion across the board. From line blocking assignments to routes to Mahomes looking shaken, rewatch that series and Mahomes didn't throw the game. Biennemi literally created mass confusion in the most pivotal moment of the game. Since the AFC Championship, Super Agent Lee Steinberg and Bob Lamond, which is Reed's agent, have done a lot of talking about Biennemi and Mahomes. This keeps the line of communication between Mahomes and Reed clear and consistent, but at the same time, players are speaking up and trying to handle the situation via the back of the clubhouse. Travis Kelsey agreed to be the face of the Chiefs during the Super Bowl, but he had as many as six issues with Biennemi during the fall. So what happens next? Well, there is the outside possibility that Biennemi could re-sign with the Chiefs for one year, or he could seek other opportunities or take a year off. Biennemi does have an image problem to work on due to prospective owners, noticing his temperament, the way he ignores his players, and his off-the-field issues in the past. The latter is a big issue in the eyes of many. It is clearly in the best interests of both parties to go in their separate ways at this point. For Biennemi to return, it means issues with Mahomes, Kelsey, Hill, Hardman, and others would have to be addressed at a satisfactory level. And then it gives suggestions as to who Andy Reid could turn to as a replacement for Eric Bieniemy. So what do I think about this article? And again, this is just a piece that got sent to me by multiple of my followers from a source that I never heard of. For all you know, this was made by Eric Bieniemy's enemies. And to be honest, this seemed to be a little bit of a hit piece on the man. Now look, I do agree with some parts of of the article, like if you do get 15 interviews with the team and you didn't get a single head coaching position despite being the offensive coordinator of the Kansas City Chiefs, then that does require you to look into the mirror a little bit. But at the same time, if the Chiefs bring back Biennemi for another year, despite Patrick Mahomes not being happy with him, and bear in mind, like Patrick Mahomes has a lot of pull on this team. And if your franchise cornerstone is Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs respect Patrick Mahomes a ton, they even deferred to him on what 2020 first round draft pick he wanted and he chose Clyde Edwards-Alaire, then if Patrick Mahomes says, I don't work well with Eric Bieniemy, then I firmly believe Eric Bieniemy would be gone. I'm extremely skeptical of this report, but I thought I would address it in a video because a lot of you guys have been asking me about it. Let me know what you guys think if you believe this report or not. Aside from that, I'm your boy Mike. I'm dropping our mic until our next upload.